Greetings all, this is Damien Fuxa, and we're going to continue on with the uh, Florence Child Blade in this Let's Learn series. Um, last time, my character managed to hit level 14, and a particular event popped up where it said uh, storm clouds had appeared over Durf, and my character had a quest to basically, uh, you know, go, um, there's basically going to be some lightning elementals uh, it's talking about in my journal entry if I... Click right here. So, storm in the city. As you approach Durf, there's a huge storm on uh, dark cloud over a small town. And when you enter, you're greeted by an army of elementals slaughtering the population. So, that's what we're going to do right now. Um, I'll note that at this time, uh, I put on equipment that's basically guarding a, a, a total of 44% lightning resistance. So, we're basically going to use that to sort of protect ourselves against the onslaught in Durf. And I'll show you out, uh, what this uh, storm in the city is all about. And as you can see, it's uh, Durf. With a blue storm clouds on top of it. So, I'll note that you shouldn't enter here if you don't have any lightning resistance or um, if you aren't particularly strong. So, as you arrive in Durf, you notice a huge dark cloud hovering over this town. You hear screams coming from the town square. So, we're just going to go to the town square here. So, there's a halfling. He's going to be a lucky fellow, this halfling gardener. We're going to march up here. Ever so slightly, and there's an enemy inside a town. Here's a greater uh, air elemental, and these are basically Glogoros, a mighty air elemental, torn away from their homeworld by powerful magic. These guys are, as you can see, 100% resistant to lightning, and this is something that you know most uh, air elementals will have, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in relation to themselves. They'll be resistant to what their element is, and they may have a weakness of something else. Um, these guys are, are mean and threatening. They are not fun. Um, you want to be very careful with them, and you essentially just don't want to, um, you know, underestimate what they can do. We're going to actually put a firewall right here. You know, this is from the rod, and that's actually going to damage him a little bit prematurely there. And it's going to back off. We're actually going to let this guy just march up close to us, and we're going to rush him. And you'll notice that he just casts a spell there. These uh, elementals are very special. They um, are probably the highest damage uh, li um, uh, elementals that you can fight. And in this case, they cast lightning on you. Lightning is... Um, how can I put this? Lightning is a kind of uh, RNG type of uh, spell. Usually with, um, with uh, lightning, you can either get damaged a whole lot by the, by the uh, type of uh, class category, um, lightning damage, or you can get a damage a little bit. In this case... Um, you know, how can I put this? I, I have a lot of lightning resistance, so he won't do too much damage to me. But if I didn't have any lightning resistance, there's a good chance that he could hit like a high um, RNG number, and it would really hurt. I'll notice that there's uh, other types of elementals in here. Here's like a minor one. This guy's just a, a regular, you know, whoever cares about him. I can use uh, a volcano, and a volcano erupts. It'll drop this on him. We actually managed to kill him with that uh, there. All right. Um, I'll note by the way you want to be very careful for marching in because both you know both these guys got shot at me there. You want to sort of use your terrain to your advantage here. So in this case, I'm sort of just, you know hiding behind buildings, letting these guys get close enough, and then jumping on top of them. And you'll notice that there's a ton of guys here now. So we're actually going to just do this. Uh, if you have it, Infusion Wilds will reduce your damage here. These guys don't really have um, anything, it's a physical nature that will they'll hit you with. There's like no daze, no stun, no freeze. These guys are just pure and atrociously magical damage. Now, if we're unlucky, we may find a really scary guy here, but we don't see him yet, or I don't see him yet. Which is good. In a sense. Good for me not to die, bad because uh, he's actually good for demonstrating something. By the way, they also cut these uh, greater ones, they also cut shock. Shock is um, a basically ability that uh, um, will daze you if it hits you. I guess that's the only real physical ability that they sort of have, but daze in, in its, of itself is not really too dangerous to really, you know, be concerned about, so to speak. Let's do this. And the purpose for doing that is that if there's a guy over there, he'll get hit by fire damage. And you see he's burning in the fire damage there. 
Note that some spells, like uh, Firewall here, you can cast around corners and walls and stuff like that. And this guy, I think he might be the last guy. Well, nope, he's not the last guy. There's plenty around him. We're just going to back up. I'm going to maybe a volcano right there. The volcano erupts. Projectile from Davian Let's Learn. Don't know what the Raging Volcano will really do, but whatever. I guess that damages a little of that volcano. Not particularly sure. I guess it actually damages these guys all around him a little bit. We're actually going to rush this guy and we're going to sidestep this guy. Alright, so once you kill all the air elementals, a, a halfling comes forth from a hiding place. You killed them all. Are we safe now? Oh, please tell me this was a bad dream. So you can tell them, be at ease. I've dispatched these monstrosities. Do you know where they came from or what they wanted? And then you can just click here. From nowhere, from the sky. I do not know. I was tending the crops just outside the town when I heard someone, uh, some, some screaming. As I entered the town, I saw the dark cloud over here. Those, those things were coming in from in, blasting the lightnings. It seems to have stopped uh, coming for now. I will look for somebody who will help dispose of these nefarious cloud. And then, thank you, blah, blah, blah. You have saved many people today. I've heard rumors of a reclusive town of wise and profitable me men somewhere in the mountains, and that's Angwin. And maybe they could help if they even exist. There are also those Ziggur or something people that claim to fight magic. Why aren't they not here? And I will not let you down. So basically, you have two options here. So, Storm in the City, you have dispatched the elementals, but the cloud lingers. You must find a powerful ally to remove it. There are rumors of a secret town in the mountains to, to the southwest. You could also check out the Ziggur group that supposedly fights magic. Now, if you're an arcane user like me, you don't have access to Ziggur, so um, going to the anti magic people is out of the question. But if you um, had that option, you could do that. You also have the option of going to Anguin, and that's what we'll probably do for this quest. And what that basically entails, we're basically going to go see um, uh, Linali and Anguin. She's the leader of uh, um, Anguin, the, Anguin, the City of Mages. And we're going to ask her a little bit about uh, what we can do about these guys. Just looking in here. If you recall from the last episode, I was thinking about possibly taking off my uh, um, sun infusion here when I was placing with this regeneration infusion. I think about actually doing that because, uh, in a general, even though infusion sun is actually kind of useful at this point, it's not it's not really useful enough that I really uh, really care to use it and will replace with something a little bit more useful. I was also thinking about using the sun infusion to light up dark passages and um, the old maze I was going to go to for this episode, but. Uh, I've decided not to do that. Alright, so we're going to go into the old maze here. This is, um, uh, I guess, the uh, next dungeon I'll, I'll suggest you go into. The old maze, as you can probably guess from the maze, is a maze. It's actually a labyrinth, and uh, you can probably guess what the boss is going to be like. So note that uh, this wall I keep putting down, it actually uh, doesn't do damage to stuff on the first term I put it on. It actually does damage on the progressive terms that uh, I put down on. So, if I put down here, this will damage this guy if he steps right there. Because that's on the end of his turn, he was inside of that. But it won't damage him if he's actually in it, unless he, you know, waits there for some reason. You're due to slow speed or whatever else. I should probably, uh, at this point, actually think about replacing this back with the um, tooth of the mouth. The, that, um... This raw is actually kind of useful, but I sort of prefer using the tooth in the mouth over it just for now. This could be a little bit useful later on, but you know, just for um, that particular boss that I was like, sort of fighting about in the last episode, the lightning boss. But I think that we actually prefer this one because this helps our ability to penetrate armor. It also gives us a little bit of damage on melee, and it gives us a little like blight conversion. And the thing about Shadow Blades, because the way I'm building them right now. My guy's built so that he does upfront melee damage, so this will actually help him more than, say, this little zappy wand that really is useful, but not really my style and not really needed. We're going to take this off and save it. We're actually going to call this the, uh, or are we calling it? Never mind. But that's basically going to be saved for the boss, uh, the lightning boss. And I think we'll put on our uh, blindness ring for this dungeon. Blindness is not really a big issue, but this, um, this ring will also help with uh, stealth and invisibility and let me see in the dark places, so it's actually not a bad ring to sort of put on just to sort of help out. 
Note that this is down here, and if you click on it, you can actually put it back on. So, as a result of that, I don't actually want to keep this on here. This could be useful if I want to use it again, but since it actually requires me to equip it to you know, put it back on, I'm not going to worry about it. And to self respawn the Minotaur. So, this is a fairly common monster that you'll find in the maze. Um, this version of it, there's actually, you know, alternate versions of uh, most of these dungeons, and um, in the other one, you probably wouldn't find minotaurs all over the place, but this is a maze, this is a labyrinth, and, you know, labyrinths have minotaurs in them, so here's a minotaur. He's, uh, he's pretty much a spellcaster, he can use, like, infusion-type talents, as you can see. In that case, he used War Shout, it's actually a berserker-type talent there, but, um, they're not too too dangerous. They're just basically um, a sort of hybrid between, you know, uh, a magic user and a physical user in all respects. There's a jelly there. And you know what, we're actually going to use, uh, I'm going to use a sling for now, just to sort of demonstrate the use of a sling a little bit more in uh, the ammo here. I didn't really get a chance to really demonstrate in the, in the um, tunnels, the Samurai tunnels there, because obviously um, there's not a really great place for it, but here I can actually do it somewhat. So, as you probably can guess from last time, shoot basically lets you shoot, and you have all this stuff, you know, on lockdown, it requires certain weapons. You note that Dirty Fighting is still available, I can rush, I can Shadow Step. These talents don't specifically require that I'm using double daggers to use, or anything else for that matter, so they can be used, and if I want to, I could sidestep this guy. But note that my damage with it is poor, because, um, the damage is basically based on your unarmed damage when you're, like, using these talents. So I can stun this guy with dirty fighting, I can do whatever I will, else want, but the damage I'm doing is very weak. My primary, primary damage will be done with shoot or shoot like taunts, and, you know, it'll work, just won't be that great. Now, there's a rogue here, he's hidden, so we're actually going to switch back to this. There he is right now, we're going to actually dual strike him, we're going to press Q after I kill this guy, switch back to our uh, slingshots. Here is an Umber Hulk, and uh, I'm going to note that this guy is an elemental. This guy, I'm not sure exactly what element he's supposed to represent. Um, I think he's supposed to be like an earth type of elemental, but uh, whatever. He's just an Umber Hulk. He, uh, this bizarre creature is a glaring eyes and large mandibles capable of slicing through rock. And uh, I guess he's not really technically an elemental, but they classify him as one in this game. So we're just going to shoot this guy. Now, you'll note that the damage I'm doing is kind of weak. That's because um, the shoot talent, unless you have, like, you know, shoot talents relating to increasing the damage or actual shoot talents, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And you'll see that he also knocks out a lot of my ammo. Now, I think what we're actually going to do, we're actually going to try and wait for his ammo to sort of go all the way. So, we'll shoot this guy. I'll note by the way, I can just press control 1 and that'll actually do well here. This sort of let me rapidly shoot these guys. You notice that by the way, my ammo is sort of going up every single turn. Well, every time I move, basically, you get one ammo. That's a new feature that I sort of added in. Basically, whenever you're, you're moving, you get back an ammo. They did, I guess, just to sort of like get away the tedious of uh, using archery type ranged weapons. It's actually part of the skirmisher update of this. Uh, okay, um, this is probably uh, what I consider an out of depth monster. This is an orc grandmaster assassin. Um, this guy, as you can probably guess from the name grandmaster, is a grandmaster kicking ass and chewing bubblegum when he's all out of gum, so to speak. He um, basically has the ability to use stealth. He also has several other abilities, such as vile poisons, and he has a ton of infusions, as you can see. He has uh, Lethality 4. That's, the, um, that's our uh, ability, basically, to uh, get higher criticals when we do criticals and stuff. He has that. He has Dagger Master. He has uh, Combat Accuracy. He has Shadow Strike. He is a whole lot of, uh, you know, keep away from me or I'll kick your ass. We're going to back up, and he actually used uh, his Wild Infusion there, but... Luckily... Oh, it is going to take us a little bit of damage. So, that's actually going to hurt us a little bit, but we'll, uh, we'll just bear through it in a moment. I'm actually going to back up here, we're actually just going to press Q. This guy's too dangerous to mess around with, so we're actually going to do Dirty Fight on him. And you'll notice that he missed me a few times. That's like, you know, just how powerful this guy can be if uh, um, you are watching it. 
I'm just going to flurry him next. So that guy, he was a good example of someone who could really kick my ass if I wasn't really paying attention. You'll find orcs sometimes scatter around in the, in the early part of your game, and usually if you, if you find classes like that, you should, you should take extra careful to uh, not get killed by them, because they can't kick your ass if you don't uh, pay attention to what they do. You know, I, um, because this is reloading and I don't really find enough, enough guys here, I'm actually just going to apparently keep shooting at these guys because they're here and I didn't notice them. Alright, we're just going to shoot off the rest of this. No. So when you run out of ammo, you can probably guess, but you don't have enough shots to keep firing. Once that happens, you basically, you know, you can't keep firing, and then, you know, you have to reload a little bit of ammo to keep firing again. So that's the thing about archery and all that. Anyhow, we're not going to worry too much about uh, slings and stuff like that. That is just more or less a demonstration type of thing. Um... I might be able to, you know, make a cure layer sling work with a shadow blade, but it won't be, you know, with this weak little t uh, tier two thing in Majiggy. We're gonna use something a little bit more um, effective next time we, if we, if we ever even jump back to using slings. Most likely, you'll never see me, me use that sling ever again. That's just a more of a one-time type of thing. By the way, if you're uh, unarmed, you don't have like any sort of abilities to uh, use be offensive. So actually. Press Q or if whatever else to switch back to your um, main hand or offhand slots to your weapons. Alright, we've got a rare black jelly. Uh oh. Um, this guy is. He's got side blades, he's got slime spit. I want to note that this guy, whenever you see anything that has um, side blades and mitosis and wild growth, these guys are Oozmancers. Oozmancers are a type of enemy that is basically an anti magic spellcaster. Um, that's basically how they sort of run. They, uh, they post magic, but they're, they're anti-magic sort of in, uh, copying their spell style. They're very dangerous. They usually have, uh, the ability to sort of generate other guys if they have enough talents for it. And they can, like, rip you to pieces if you're, if you're not careful, but hopefully we can kill this guy. And here's an example, basically, of him spawning a couple guys to, uh, sort of be his defense, so it was a little bit too late. Luckily, that was just an ooze, too, so, you know, he wasn't too dangerous to begin with, but... Ooze Mancers are not something you want to, uh, um, take lightly. Here's a Bandit Lord, by the way. Bandit Lords are summoners. They, uh, will summon off, as you can see, thief-type enemies. In this case, they've got, uh, rogues and thieves and bandits. Uh, he can also summon assassins if he wishes. They're usually, um, the Bandit Lords themselves aren't really too tough, but... They're guys that, you know, come with them are kind of tough. And notice that basically Bandit Lord summons Rogue, Bandit Lord summons Rogue. So he's just summoning guys like there's no tomorrow. We're actually going to use Dirty Fighting on this guy here. These guys in Intol shouldn't be too, too threatening. But, honestly I shouldn't, you know, this guy is going nuts basically. He's summoning Rogues like there's no, no tomorrow. We're actually going to use the big uh, one here. We're going to kill him. Kill this guy before he summons anything else. I hit him with uh, a stun talent to prevent him from stunning anything else. And we'll just do sweep to finish him off and hit this guy. Note that I sort of ran out of stamina there. These uh, talents here, the sweep and the whirlwind. Unlike, say, flurry, which is 15, or uh, dual strike is 15, or 35, which is 10. These are expensive talents, the AoEs. Um, they are powerful talents. They can be very effective when there's a guy surrounding you, but they can rip you to pieces. Note that this guy used a very special ability. He switched place. If I actually go to do domestic Zolok, you can actually see that. But, uh, Rogue Jesus switched place. He uh, missed me, but basically he um, basically swapped places with me as a result. And we sort of switched places. That's actually a talent that I have access to. Switch place right there. Using a series of tricks and maneuvers, you switch places with your target. Switching places will confuse your foes, granting you evasion 50% for two turns. While switching places, your weapons will connect with the target. This will not do weapon damage, but the uh, hit effects of the weapons can trigger. So... He swapped places with me and actually put me in between these guys. We're just going to jump up here and jump up here as a result. So I don't, you know, you know, get attacked by all these guys at once. We'll use Dirty Fighting on this guy. This guy also did switch place. So that happened yet again. But at this point, all three of these guys are kind of weak. So we'll finish off maybe this guy. I know I'm taking lots of damage. So we're just going to hit this, hit this. We're going to get rid of our uh, thing there. Regenerate. And that guy actually killed himself by hitting me. 
kill that guy, and we're just gonna, you know, go after these guys. This guy apparently was stealthed, and he tried to evade, you know, detection by me, and really didn't really matter, but he did actually do it for a little bit there. Now, I'll note that if you're really worried about stealth, you can have, like, Piercing Sight here, or um, also if you uh, go after it, Divination has Keen Senses, again, which will help you see through stealth or invisible opponents. I don't really think there's a big deal too much about worrying about their stealth abilities, these guys, this early in the game. Um, stealth enemies can be dangerous, like that Orc Grand Master Assassin. Uh, he, if he uh, is stealth and he hits you while in stealth, he'll do a lot of damage. But if you see him, then it's not really a big issue, and I'll sort of demonstrate that a little bit later. Maybe on the next stealth opponent, I guess. Uh, this guy is rare, he just summons something. So, if you see this guy pop up, this is Flame Spitter, or the next guy he'll summon, the Warhound. Uh, those are basically summoning talents. Basically, this guy has the ability to um, summon types of guys to help him out. And it's actually how these guys, the summoners, sort of primarily fight. Summoners are a class that rely on the summons to do their damage and dirty work for him. We're just going to uh, rush this guy and try and finish him off before he has any ability to summon anyone else. Note that I'm taking lots of damage, and it's due to this guy right here. He uh, hits really hard. We're going to do this. We're actually going to use the big one here. We're going to shadow step this guy. And there's a thief. Just going to dual strike him. There's the way down. And. Kill that guy. There's another Minotaur. Note that uh, Minotaurs, they can use some like special attacks that can really hurt you. So this guy right here. Um, he hit me for 45 physical, 6 gold, 9 nature, 6 uh, temporal, 4 healing. Don't know why he healed me, but whatever. He basically uh, hits for quite a bit of damage. And... Um, you should be kind of wary of that damage. You can also use some other special talents besides like the Warshout you already saw him do. Um, he has like the ability to use Stunning Blow, Stunner Armor, Stunner um, Arms. These are basically, uh, you know, Stunning Blow is just stunning, but Stunner Arms and Stunner, um, Stunner Armor are special abilities but basically reduce your armor or they uh, reduce your ability to uh, do damage. And um, be wary of it. The disguise isn't going to be too dangerous. We're just going to uh, rip them to pieces and be done with them. Alright, there's nothing else over here, so this chest is going to get opened. And Hummerhorn, White Murm, so nothing really, you know, here that we really care about. We'll start off with a Whirlwind, and I'll hit everyone around us. Finish them off, and we're done. Note the stairs is right there in that corner right down here. So if you're in this version of the maze, the one, uh, you know, it's like this like one big floor here with a big maze, it's actually just right at the uh, uh, other corner, so once you get to it, then you are basically through the maze. Nobly, not, you know, none of these enemies are really, uh, you know, threatening in, in the slightest. That Orc Grandmaster Assassin was kind of threatening, and some of these rares, like this guy, can be uh, threatening. Um, you'll notice I just took a whole lot of damage. This guy here, um, this hit me for 154 physical, and uh, he basically lashed out with Spinning Backhand. Do you remember what Spinning Backhand was? If we recall from the Ring of Blood episode, where I was using that like sort of slave to like battle off those ten enemies, um, I basically used spinning backhand. Spinning backhand is that ability to uh, charge like you know some spaces in front of you, doing extra damage for each space you charge. And this guy just used it to do a whole lot of damage on me. And I noticed they also got a combo on him on himself as well. So this is uh, a brawler enemy, and he's combined with a thief uh, type of uh, you know character. This is a cut purse, luckily, so it's with the lowest rank of thief, but this guy, he, um, he's going to be kind of dangerous if I don't, like, you know, uh, be very careful of him. We're going to use our wild strength to revet slow. We got rid of the wrong thing. We're going to use regeneration here. And uh, you'll notice they stun me this time. So this guy, as you can see, he's ripping me to pieces. We're just going to use dirty fighting, hopefully, and stun him back. And we're just going to uh, hit him. And basically, you know, just try and, uh, you know, get through this without much trouble. Now, this white ant service jumped down here. I'm actually thinking that what we might do, we're just going to back off one. 
And the purpose for backing up one is that I actually sort of, you know, separate him from us. I'm going to basically use that uh, to our advantage. We're just going to wait for our stun to go off. And then we're just going to wait for this all to come off of cooldown. And now that that's all off cooldown, we're using Regeneration Fusion. And we're just going to Shadow Step this guy because it has the ability to bypass through these guys. And after that, we're just going to Flurry him. And you'll notice that he survives. So Blar, he's pretty damn powerful for a uh, uh, you know, rare enemy. He's actually putting up a fight, much like that rogue in the Shamworn Tunnels. And I also have to watch out for the fact that he could, um, if he wanted to, you know, jump on top of me with that uh, spinning backhand do a lot of damage. So we're just possibly going to wait for uh, Shadow Step to sort of come off cooldown. And then we're just going to Shadow Step him again. And he's dead. So he put up a bit of a fight. Sometimes you have to watch out for rare enemies, and that's an example where one actually posed a little bit of a problem seemingly, but uh, I was able to, you know, get um, some luck from, like, you know, other guys, like, in, you know, this game in between us, and um, also just being able to uh, make use of my, you know, my skills properly to survive the encounter. Uh, I'm just taking a look at these temporarily to see what I might be possibly able to make use of if I use these items. None of these items specifically look that useful, but it's sometimes worth, you know, looking through them to see what you can get. Especially if you're going through a dungeon, like a, this Demesis here is a really big dungeon, this one right here, this floor. So I might, be, I might have picked up something that might be useful and I just didn't realize it yet. So just a quick check, no, nothing in here is actually specifically that useful, so we're probably just going to move all this stuff that I can to my inventory. I'm probably going to sell something, um, the white name stuff in here, just because, you know, some of the stuff is really heavy. Maybe I'll sell that armor that uh, one has picked up. So we'll transmerify these weapons because they're white names. And now we're even going to transmogrify that sling I had from before. And we'll transmogrify this because it's a very heavy piece of equipment. And I still need a little bit more. We're going to sell this, this one right here to bring our uh, encumbrance down to a more manageable level. Okay. They're all dead. And I'll note we just uh, actually just picked up an item worth my uh, attention right immediately right now. And damn, is it worth my attention. This is a regeneration infusion. It's got a cooldown of 12, it scales with dexterity, and it does 246 uh, life over you know some turns. That's immediately replaced the uh, uh, white name one that we have, this one right here. It's even better than my, my original one. So very, very powerful. Regeneration uh, infusion is found. I'll note by the way that uh, I usually like to have two regeneration infusions on most of my character builds. Um, I also, you know, I may also like to have like a shielding rune or a healing infusion. It may vary depending on what the character is capable of. Like a, on a Sun Paladin, you may want to just do away with one of them because they already have very good healing, and they probably benefit from other type of inscriptions or runes. But in general practice on non undead characters, I like to have two regeneration infusions that are like you know suitably useful to use. Um, I also like to have a physical wild for my character. So we've actually got my character sort of set up as I sort of want right now. This is like, you know, a very powerful uh, inscription setup for my character. We're just going to whirlwind these guys. And we're just going to finish you off. There's a crappy healing fusion. And this is a good example where, you know, this is a really crappy healing fusion. That, that's just only useful for curing poison. Alright, um, I'll note in this case, it, this is where a good example where you have like a stealth enemy, and he's probably in a space right next to me. Um, I can't see him, and he could be dangerous. If you're dealing with stealth enemies and you're really, really scared that they might be able to do a lot of damage, the best way to sort of handle them is just back off, and keep backing off until they appear. And then, you know, once they appear, you can just, you know, uh, be sure they won't get any extra damage from being inside stealth. If um, they hit you from stealth, they'll do extra damage usually. Uh, there's abilities that um, can let them do so. He doesn't actually have those abilities, but I can go show them in my uh, skill tree here. So there's this ability right here called Backstab. Um, uh, that basically gives you a higher bit of melee. Lethality, that basically does this. I think it's actually in stealth. 
So this is a stealth tree. So let's look at stealth here. Stealth lets you enter stealth mode. Its uh, power is based off cunning, and that's basically uh, how easy it is or how hard it is for enemies to detect you. If you successfully enter stealth, enemies will not know where exactly where you are. And if they didn't know that you were there to begin with, they won't even notice you. Um, stealth reduces your light radius to zero, and it won't work in massive armors. But when you enter stealth, uh, foes can't basically keep last sight on you, and they don't know where you are, and they may attack the wrong square if they know you're in the vicinity, but don't know where you are, or just do other stupid stuff. Now, there's abilities like Shadow Strike here. When you're striking from stealth, the attack is automatically a critical hit. So, if that guy hit me, he would automatically critical if he had Shadow Strike. Uh, the Shadow Strike would do extra damage uh, versus a normal critical hit up to 3 grids away and then damage up to 0% at distance 10. So, um, Shadow Strike will actually do extra damage when it does, uh, you know, hits inside of stealth status. And... These bonuses are guaranteed for spell and mind crits, even if the target can see you before it hits. So, um, basically, if there's like, you know, like a, a type of spell, uh, let's say, say um, what spells do they have here? Let's say, for example, I got level 4 Illuminate and I hit this guy, uh, you know, a guy in stealth from, with Illuminate here. You'd actually hit the guy with a critical hit, uh, if that can critical. I'm actually not sure if Illuminate can critical, but... Uh, whatever. Basically, if you had like an, uh, uh, like a ranged type of bolt spell, you hit the guy from stealth with it, you'd actually manage to um, hit that guy with a critical hit with that spell or that mental crit critical hit or whatever else talent you were using, uh, you know, for extra damage. So it doesn't just work with physical hits, it works with any hit. You also have hide in plain sight that basically lets you go back in stealth regardless of whether opponents can see or not. And there's also unseen actions is basically uh, what unseen actions will do. If you attack stuff, uh, you know, with um, unstealthy actions like attacking people from stealth, usually that will break stealth, but with unseen actions you have a chance of remaining in stealth to continue attacking them from stealth. It's actually a really uh, nuisance of ability if uh, your enemies have it available to them. And anyway, this guy, as you know, this is a demonstration, that is a sort of I can deal with a stealth opponent that might have Shadow Strike. That guy didn't, but if he did, that's like a way to counter him. Okay, so at this point we've actually gone through most of the maze, and there's another doomed enemy right here. Oh, that's a cursed. We're just going to uh, shout strike him. He's out of the way. Note, by the way, that uh, in the maze you don't really have to worry too much about corners and stuff like that. Generally, the maze is very straightforward. If uh, I was just charging the black and there's guys over here, there's plenty of way to you know run backwards or not not really get in trouble in the maze. So you can rush to your heart's content. A very very well in the maze and not really have to worry about the consequences of rushing and possibly getting uh, into trouble as a result. Hmm, interesting. I think I should prefer this one though, just for the effects that one's giving. This, uh, this is actually a good example of an item, by the way. As you can see, it basically gives the ability here only die when reaching negative 60 life. There's actually some items that will let you go below 0% life to keep fighting. Uh, when it happens, you don't actually know how much life you have left, I don't think. It actually says unknown and all that, but um, as a result, you basically can continue fighting after you get reduced below zero life to um, keep fighting if possible. That's actually a half-decent de uh, helmet, just so, just so you know, but I think we'll actually just prefer to keep this one because I get that effect to gain 10% of a turn, and I get a little bit more damage when I'm moving stuff with that one, so we'll keep that one instead. And we're just going to collect this stuff. And I'm just over to Incumbents yet again. You know, I'm thinking that... Ah, never mind. We're just going to sell one of these. Kill those ants. And that's it for this level. Now, at this point, much like in the other episodes, you could probably, if you're really hurting for money, in this case we're not, just take this money and just go out and um, sell it and just come back and you know have more space for where else would be here. I'll note that uh, there's two reasons why I'm not going to do that here. This version of the maze, it's very, very small, the second level. Um, it's basically like a little boss arena. In this case, here's the boss right here. I mean, the arena is so small, you're probably going to see the boss immediately. Um, Minotaur of the Labyrinth, he's basically a fierce and bullheaded monster. He swings a mighty axe as it curses all who defy him. He's uh, got some like melee type of talents, if I look at him. He's got Crush, he's got um, a couple infusions, he's got Warshout. 
He's nothing too spectacular. Actually, we'll go down here, I think. And he's actually warshot us. By the way, there's some lore in this dungeon, by the way, where uh, you can see a little bit about, you know, about me, who's basically experimenting with probability travel. And um, I saw something, I don't know what it was, but it was big and shadowy. But when I tried chasing it, I got lost. Um, maybe I just imagined it? No. I'm sure it must be something cool and exciting. I must just keep exploring. And there's a little bit of blood on this piece of scrap parchment. So, you probably saw this guy, and uh, it's, it's supposed to like, just to sort of say that he's kind of dangerous. This guy really isn't that dangerous, but he can be if his level's high enough and, you know, he causes a little bit of problems. In this case, he sort of confused us here, so that actually is a bit of a problem, but, uh... Eh, who cares? He's, um, not going to be too dangerous, I don't think. Let's make sure. He does have a fusion of the sun, by the way, so he can't blind me, so I'll keep on the, uh, the ring here, the Pixie Steel Ring of Sensing. That's actually part of the reason I had this on, because this guy could blind me, or basically all the rogues and this guy here, they have a chance of spawning with sun infusions, which, you know, can blind you, so that's part of the reason I, I came in here for a blindness immunity type thing. And there it goes, he blinded me right there. And note that I'm actually backing up here. And I'm actually back against the wall. So I'm back here, and we're just going to wait two turns. And there he is. So he's used up his ability to sort of blind me. He's, he's used up the washout. Those are on cooldown for now. He is less left with having a few options to, uh, available to him. He has Crush. He has the re 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 Regeneration Infusion. The uh, Stunning Blow ability. Sunner Armor. Sunner Arms. Much less the other Mentors. He's kind of dangerous at the moment, but he's not too dangerous. So... We're just basically going to activate our Wrath of the Woods. We'll activate uh, the Shielding Ruin. We're just going to use Shadow Step to get on top of him. And he tried to use Stunning Blow. He actually missed. So he actually failed to stun us. And that means that he has um, only the access to Sun Armor or Sun Arms to possibly use on a character. So I can just use Dirty Fighting. And he actually used Crush there. So here's an example of what Crush can do. It basically pin me to the ground. We can just infuse him while out of that. And that basically gives us additional defense against this guy for now, plus it gives rid of that pin status. Uh, this guy's stunned. We're going to actually hit him with um, Sweep, actually, this time around. I'll note that Sweep is actually kind of special. Um, it's a very, it's a very you know, limited AoE type of thing to hit, sort of hit you in the front, but this actually has the ability to make stuff bleed when you hit it, so I'm basically going to hit him. And you'll notice that this guy actually has the bleed status on top of him right now. So he's bleeding for four turns. And uh, he's actually going to take extra damage as a result of that bleed damage. And um, that'll actually help in this fight. We're going to just basically uh, keep hitting him now, in normal. Note that the stun has gotten off him. They tried to use Sunder Arms, which uh, probably is on lock cooldown there, but whatnot. It failed. So yeah, he's basically killed. I'm actually picked up a Steel Helm with Garkul. Um, I was going to tell you what we're basically going to do with this. Oh, damn it. I need to actually have Strength for that, don't I? Uh, everything requires Strength. And yeah, everything else he dropped was like, you know, nothing really spectacular or really uh, too impressive. This is kind of impressive, but it's heavy. I think we're just going to sell the Mind Star, sell the Great Maul. I'll put on this because it's a strength item. We're actually going to put on our pickaxe right here. This gives us strength. The reason I'm putting those on is not just for incumbents, but it's also because I can put on. Garkul's Helm. Garkul's Helm is a very special helmet. As you can see, it gives us plus 5 strength, plus 4 willpower, and plus uh, five, 5 con. And it's a set in them. Set in them. Uh, there's actually a very powerful uh, set piece that sort of pairs up with this item to give you additional bonuses. It also gives you some saves. It also gives you a little bit of dam extra damage, physical, physical damage there, and also gives you some uh, um, increase in technique fuggery, which basically improves the effectiveness of fuggery type talents. That's something for Marauders. Um, so that's kind of cool that we actually did that. I might be able to use this if, like, you know, I uh, sort of sell other stuff, but we'll maybe need room for other stuff as well. So we're just going to rest up here. There's something obviously attacking up there, but whatever, it's just uh, not something I'll be concerned with, with right now. I'll note that it's uh, another uh, multiple of five level, so we only got two uh, class points and no generic points, so no extra investment in Dagger Master here for the moment. Now, at this point, I've so, sort of been, you know, just sort of running up, um, picking up extra, you know, abilities over here. I haven't really been touching dual weapon defense like I said I was going to. 
I'm going to start doing that now just to sort of get our de uh, defense up a little bit. You notice that you know the, de the animation returns to start kicking in. We're only getting uh, you know a little bit uh, of a boost for each of the uh, first two uh, extra town points we put in there. Next town put in, we'll only get free, and then we'll get even more after less after that. But extra defense is very important to sort of you know try and boost up if you're going to go for it. The more defense you have, if you're going to go for that type of character, uh, is better than you know just having this uh, well little bit you know gains here with the town point. No, if it's defense, get as much defense as possible if you're going to try and uh, make use of that stat. Boost up our dexterity, and you'll note that it's actually grayed out here. Um, this like little graying out here is actually a good example of something about this game. There's actually a soft cap when you're investing in stats that prevents you from increasing a stat beyond a certain point at a certain level. So at level 15 on the floor, and I can't invest any more than 31 uh, stat points into dexterity or any of these other stats for that matter. Um, I have to wait until I level up again to basically get a little bit of an increase on my soft cap, and then you'll actually probably see that soft cap in display again on the next level. And, uh-oh. So whenever you see Necrotic Aura, this guy is a Necromancer. He has the ability to uh, summon undead. He actually has Create Minions. And Create Minions is basically fires a powerful undead energy through your Necrotic Aura. For each recent death that happened inside your aura, you raise up to um, you know up to four undead minions. So he can raise four undead minions to sort of serve him in defeating me. We immediately want to try and stun this guy who's dirty fighting, and we luckily did. And we're actually going to hit him again with dual strike. And that might sound like kind of odd just hitting with that, but the reason for him with both those stun effects is that it will lock down even more of his talents. For uh, you know he won't be able to use any of his uh, necromancer talents. I'll also note by the way he just actually used something very special. He um he just used probably the most annoying ruin that you will ever ever face in this game. It's called Ruin Acid Wave. Uh, ruin Acid Wave, as you can see, it basically uses this uh, sort of debuff here. It's called Disarmed. Your target is maimed and they are unable to uh, correctly wield a weapon. And what that does is my guy now has no weapons to sort of wield. He can't use any of his talents. He can't use his daggers. He's pretty much weaponless for six turns. Now, if I use the Wild Infusion, that'll go away, but uh, it's very possible that in the uh, future playing of this game, you'll find me possibly get disarmed, and I won't be able to remove it, and then essentially what disarm does, it prevents you from attacking. And it's really, really uh, effective at, you know, preventing you from attacking. Note that this guy has actually gone below 0% uh, health. That uh, is the same talent that's sort of being mentioned there, Blurred Mortality. It actually has a special ability that basically lets you go below 0% HP, much like that item I had. And as you can see, it basically says HP unknown. So I don't know what HP he's got left. He's just below 0% HP. If I had like a finishing talent, like um, uh, on a Wormwick class, they have something called Swallow. You can use that to sort of instantly kill him. But in this case, we're just going to have to uh, just beat him up until he goes down. So he's gone. We're going to kill everything over here. And this guy, what are you? This guy's got... Rapid Shot. So this guy's got the ability to use archery type talents. If he wants to, he can actually... Warsh out. I think this guy actually is actually a Berserker. A Berserker Thief. That'll be kind of interesting. Um, you don't usually see... Uh, you know, War Shout and Rapid Shot or talents like this on top of the same character. But it's, this is happening because there is actually an Archer Tree in the Berserker class. And he actually picked those up. And he's going to be able to use Archer type talents along with being a Berserker. So, kind of interesting. We're going to do this. And we're going to just rush this guy. The reason I rushed him is just so that he'd get dazed. And um, it also just points me directly and will leave this guy. And damn, there's a lot of guys over here. It's a lot of multiplying enemies, so there's nothing really, you know, too dangerous, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, enemies, so to speak of. And he, also, he actually used an ability called Disarm, which actually, just, as you can probably guess, disarms you. We're just going to uh, Wild Infusion out of that. I'm going to use Sweep, first thing here, just so that he gets the bleed effect on him. And he's bleeding now. And he used Warsh out there to sort of confuse me, which is going to be a, a bit of an issue, but whatever. Um, I just got confused for 8 turns, so what we're actually going to do at this point... He's bleeding. He's actually going to die from that bleeding effect. So we're just going to go try and back off. And you'll note that when you're confused, if you try and like, I'm actually trying to move in this sort of direction over here. And I'll actually click this to show it. But 
You basically sometimes fail to move the way you want to if you're confused, or you sometimes fail to use talents. And I looked at that guy actually died there. But anyhow, I'm basically confused here. I'm basically trying to move away from these guys. I'm not always guaranteed to move in the way I want to. In this case, I moved here instead of down here. I'll move this way. And there we go. But basically, um, confusion is kind of like, you know, sort of like, uh, it gives you a sort of chance to fail to do whatever you want to do properly. So moving, you move randomly. Um, if you're attacking, you may attack the wrong square. If you use a talent, you may fail to use a talent. It's just a whole lot of, uh, uh well, why am I able to do anything? Kill this guy. Those guys weren't really tough, but I mean, there's a lot of them there, which is... It's a lot of guys to sort of deal with. So yeah, you'll notice this is a very small level. Um, it's also a very compact level for, you know, the amount of guys you'll be fighting. So, I, I found those two rares because, like, I guess the level decided to spawn a couple rares. Well, I guess there's only one rare, but there's that rare. There's also a lot of chests, so there's lots of rewards to sort of find this level as well. And there's the exit, sort of, to get out of here, by the way. So you can use this to sort of teleport to the surface. That's actually a very special, um, a very special thing. Not all the dungeons have like to sort of exit portal to sort of get out of here, and you'll actually you're actually able to take a stairs out of here if you want to get to the previous level. But there's a way to sort of get out of the dungeon quickly, and I'll show show you that off once we get over this chest and deal with this guy here. He is he's a brawler. He's got axe kick. He's got uppercut. These are brawler type talents. You know those are the same ones that basically we were using on the brawler guy. Uh, we'll use Dirty fighting on him and stun him. We'll actually uh, use wild infusion to get rid of that. We're going to use Wrath of the Woods and we're going to use Flurry. And as you can see, he's got his combo going up all over the place. We'll hit him with uh, Dual Strike. He's almost dead, but we're just going to rush him and he's gone. So that's it for them. That's it for the level. That was the old maze. Nothing too hard. Nothing too snazzy. And sadly, nothing uh, too great for weapons. Oh well. Now, I'll note that my encumbrance is all the way up to 97 because I've got this on. I've got the... Uh, I didn't actually take off the strength gloves or uh, take off the, um, the pickaxe. So we actually got a little bit of extra strength as a result of that. So that's why we have that sort of extra strength there. I'm going to... Keep what here? All right, that's probably about the the most we can probably probably keep for uh, selling on this character. I actually want to sell, sell one of these, and we'll pick up this one right here. Nope, uh, that actually pushed us over the increments. All right, what am I gonna probably just get rid of in light of that? Let's get rid of the dagger, I guess. So there's the old maze. wasn't too tough. Now, I'll note, by the way, that one of the reasons I sort of cleared out Durf from the Lightning Elementals at the start of this episode, um, I recommend, as, re as, a, you know, as a sort of example, what to do here about Durf. Um, Storm and City, it basically places a bunch of elementals in here at level 14. And as a result of that, you basically lose access to Durf if uh, you don't you know, clear out those elementals. Um, once you clear out those elementals, it's not really a big deal. But clearing out the air elementals themselves can be kind of dangerous. I don't really have, as you can see, very good light resistance because I took off all that light, lightning resistance gear. And um, the thing about this area, once it gets those uh, lightning elementals, I do recommend, you know, maybe if, once you get 40% lightning resistance to try and come in here and clear it out. If you can't get that much resistance, just wait until, say, level 20 or uh, maybe a little bit um, whenever you feel comfortable on your character to sort of come in here and just take out the lightning elementals. Use the buildings as cover, use the, uh, you know, this instance over here as cover, and then just basically just kill them off as, you know, as you can. And now you can just use the shops here to sort of sell off stuff as you wish. So that's what we're going to do for this, uh, this part of the episode. I'm going to sell this. And... 
I think we're also going to keep that a little bit longer for its ability to sort of, you know, give us the advantage of basically upping our cunning a little bit. We'll not use that. Not use this. We're going to keep that for uh, the lightning resistance. So that's this. Over here, we're going to uh, sell off this uh, wand here. This here too. The old shots that we had. Sell off these uh, weak infusions that we're not going to use. Note that at this point, my goal's gone over 500. If there's an artifact that you're saving up for, then it might be worth you know saving up for uh, that artifact, but... I might keep this. You'll see why I'm keeping this. Alright, I'm actually going to, at this point, just sort of switch around our gear a little bit. We're going to keep this a little bit longer, maybe. Actually, you know what? Slice Grip... Um, the thing about Slice Grip is that as a Tier 1 artifact, it's not a bad artifact if you're going to go to places where, you know, you can use the Poison Immunity, or if you're an Oozmancer, or if you know that you're going to make use of, like, the Nature Resistance. At this point, I've gone through the game, and... Um, I'm not really, really scared about poison damage anymore, so we're actually not going to put this back on. We'll stick to using these ones over here, the Umbral Gloves, just because it gives a little bit of physical power and also gives us a little bit of uh, strength, so I don't have to you know, keep swapping on and off to uh, carry stuff. So we're actually going to maybe sell this. We're going to tag this as the uh, Lit Resist Helmet. So, Lightning Resist Helm. And let's do that. We'll sell this to the store in a moment. I'm actually going to take off this right now. This is, um, I use this because, you know, in the maze, it might be a little bit of use to having, uh, you know, be able to see the stealth enemies there or get blind, you know, avoid being blinded. But we won't really care about that much. We'll uh, not put it back on. I think. Do I want this? This gives me ability to increase my spell save, my magic, my uh, disarm pinning, not back, and maximum life. I think that's actually going to be kind of beneficial to put on. I might want this for defense a little bit later, but we're going to actually put this one on, this ring here. The reason I'm putting this on is because for the next few dungeons, we're actually going to go to places where, um, I guess, pinning and not back and the extra life and all that other stuff is going to be kind of useful. Normally, I don't really care for these type of rings that basically give you disarm immunity, pinning immunity, knockback immunity this early in the game, but it's not a bad ring to put on, and um, we're going to basically make use of it for our next dungeon. Alright, uh, I'm not going to use this anymore, so we'll take it off. So, at this point, we've gone through the old maze, the, uh, um, the hidden compound, we've gone through the Samurai and Borwater's place, we've gone through the, the Golden Graveyard. I'll know at this point we're level 15. And level 15 is around this time I decide to go to the Old Forest usually. And um, the Old Forest is going to be a very special dungeon to sort of visit. We're just going to uh, enter it for now. And next time we basically come back to do this, we're going to be dealing with escorts, for example, again. So, lead on, I'll protect you. I'm actually going to kill that guy. And next time, we'll basically be in the Old Forest. And it's going to be something very special at the end of the old forest. So take care.